Two things before this video starts. One, sorry for any background noise. And two, spoilers. But do you really care for spoilers about Riverdale? I don't think we do. Anyways, enjoy the video. Every time I'm in the street, I hit <laughs> Now, if you guys remember, I did the top 10 best iCarly episodes, and that video actually got a good amount of views. Whilst I am working on Victorious, which hopefully should come out in November, or maybe even October if I can rush it out, but I'm going to say November right now, I want to do some other teen shows or, you know, that kind of stuff um, before I do Victorious. And I think a perfect one at least for our current generation, is the CW's Riverdale. Now, I've talked about Riverdale on this channel before, and I've pretty much grown to not really like the show, but find it watchable. I can watch it. It's not an amazing show by any means. But I can enjoy it, you know? Now, the reason why there won't be a lot of fancy editing throughout this video is because... I didn't really want to do a top 5. There are going to be honorable mentions, but I didn't really want to do a top 10. This is just going to be a top 5. So, there you go. Uh, that's how good this show is. Now, there are definitely a lot more episodes that are considered good from this show, but I just wanted to pick the 5 that I know. I can rewatch these episodes, and I will not hate it. The acting's good. Pretty much these are the best episodes of Riverdale. So the top five best episodes of Riverdale. By the way, um, I want to give a special shout out. Not a sponsor or anything. Uh, just a quick shout out to my friend whose YouTube name is Ling Ling Plays Viola. Now this is one of my personal best friends. They started a YouTube channel and it's growing very, very fast. I mean, I think he just started uploading consistently maybe about a month ago and I think he's already 275 so he's actually growing pretty quick so if you guys want to go check out his channel this was not this is just the courtesy of my heart he didn't tell me to I just wanted to if you guys want to go subscribe to his channel link will be in the description he does orchestra music so if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff go check out his channel now here we go with the top five so number five is going to be the season one finale the Sweet Hereafter. Now, the reason why this episode is in the top five is because in terms of moments or in terms of scenes, this episode might have possibly my favorite scene from all of Riverdale. And I mean legitimately my favorite scene. I don't mean that like, oh, my favorite scene is Jughead saying I'm weird, I'm a weirdo. Because that was, like, if you haven't watched the show and you've seen that scene... You will be like, oh, my favorite scene from Riverdale? Oh, it's Jughead saying that. Like, sarcastically. But legitimately, like, from a... Cr not a critical standpoint, because how can be critical with a CW show and actually take it seriously? <laughs> like, looking at it as, like, filmmaking or TV show making in this case, this is a really intense scene. Um, pretty much what happens is that throughout this episode, they basically... Cheryl's pretty much fixing the wrongs that she had done. So she's giving back to Jughead. She, you know, she's giving back to Archie, Veronica, Betty, all the people that she's really been mean to or not nice to. She's finally starting to give them back. And the reason why is because her home life is horrible and she's just given up on life and she's trying to kill herself, which leads to the lake scene. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the scene where the core force of Veronica, Archie, Betty, Jughead, they find out that uh, Cheryl's going to Sweetwater River. If you guys don't know the plot of Riverdale, well, this is... <laughs> we don't even know what it's about anymore. But season one is basically the Blossoms are like this rich family, and uh, the son of that family passes away, and it's a murder mystery to find out who committed the murder. So Cheryl Blossom is... Jason, who is his name, is her brother, and she's pretty much done at this point. So she goes back to where Jason died, and she's just pounding on ice. She's kicking the ice. She's 
just punching ice, trying to make a hole. The core four come down. They're like, come on, please just come back to the shore. And she just drops in. And I mean, she just drops. Like, it's a intense music. And then, boom, she drops. Archie's running down. Like, and the funny thing is, is that they try to go on the ice beforehand. And they're like, no, if we all go on, then it's all going under. Archie doesn't care anymore. The second Cheryl falls, he's running. Um, they find out Tide had got her, so they look around. Archie finds her under the ice. And Archie just punches the ice, fit, like, knuckles first. And it's like a frozen lake. And he's just punching it. And there's blood all over the place. The actor, KJ Appa, actually broke his hand doing that scene. And they had to keep it. He continued the scene with a broken hand. That's insane. And he's just punching ice. Cheryl sees a hallucination underwater, and she's just done at this point. Archie's still punching, finally creates a hole, does CPR, save Cheryl. It's such an intense scene. That scene alone puts this in the top five. Um, there also is, like, actually not horrible scenes, and this is the season one finale, so, as a finale, it's actually not too horrible. So, you know what? Definitely deserves to be in the top five. Number four is actually, I think, the only episode from season three, if I'm not mistaken. Which is no surprise, because season three is definitely the worst season of Riverdale. Number four is The Midnight Club. So, basically, um, season three is... What even is season three? <laughs> Well, the main plot line or mystery is that there is a gargoyle king. <laughs> this is going to sound insane to people who don't watch the show. So, there is this knockoff D&D &D that they call G&G, &G, and the main mascot is the gargoyle king. Well, the game is called Griffins and Gargoyles, and the main person is the gargoyle king. He's pretty much like the god. Like, everyone worships him. And so there's a bunch of stuff surrounding that. So once Betty finds out that her mother found knew about the game when she was younger, she tries to figure out some information from her. And this entire episode is basically uh, it's not a it's kind of a homage, but it's also kind of a ripoff of Breakfast Club and. <laughs> Breakfast Club and, like, those 80s movies, like, those 80s-style movies where it's just, like, you know, just weird overacting and all that kind of stuff. My favorite movie, Night Killer. Basically that. Uh, and it's actually pretty cool because uh, the, like, the teenagers in Riverdale, the teenagers, quote-unquote, um, they can play... They are playing the adult versions of themselves. So, for example, uh, Louis Reinhardt plays Betty, and then Machen Amick plays um, Alice Cooper, who's Betty's mom. And in the flashback episode, Louis Reinhardt gets to play Alice Cooper, for example. Also, um, Cole Sprouse gets to play his father, but he's still Cole Sprouse, just as his father, just in the past. So, it's kind of like. It's cool like that. So we get to see, like, different people, like, different actors that we don't see on the show or different characters that we don't see on the show interact in this episode. And everyone seems to be having a lot of fun. So it's also just one of my personal favorites. I enjoy it. So I'll put it on here. Number three is actually a pretty creative episode and one that definitely is good <laughs> for season four of Riverdale, and that is... The Locked Room. Season number three is going to be The Locked Room. Now, season four's mystery is Jughead gets transferred to a new school. And pretty much a bunch of stuff happens um, related around murder. It's related around um, a book series. Um, just a lot of stuff surrounding this school. There's a lot of controversy surrounding the people in the school, just the school itself. So pretty much this episode is, hey, you didn't understand what was happening? Here's what was happening. Literally, Jughead, well, th first of all, Jughead fakes his own death. Then he returns to his classroom that he just got transferred to. 
and he pretty much explains everything that happened in season four to us. So if you didn't understand anything from season four, this is the episode to watch. You get all the background stuff about um, just the perfect murder. You get Jughead faking his own death, which, by the way, was a pretty weird cop out. And if you're really, sp I've spoiled this video already. So if you came into this video. And by now, you went into the comment section and be like, you should have given us a spoiler warning. You're really worried about spoilers for Riverdale? You live an incredible life, by the way. Um, yeah, so you get why Jack had faked his own death, which is pretty much because the people that were trying to murder him couldn't hit him in the back of the head hard enough with a rock. Yeah, it's as stupid as it sounds. <laughs> he survived because they couldn't hit him hard enough with a rock. I love this show. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of stupid stuff, but overall, I enjoy it. You know, it's a really good concept showing Betty and Jughead just locking these criminals in this very, like, claustrophobic area where no one can escape and we also get a lot of stuff just explaining all the people at the school not even what they did just looking into their characters um overall really fun episode number two is judgment night fun episode that's all i gotta say <laughs> that's all i gotta say i'm not gonna spoil this one i'm not gonna talk about this one i'm just gonna say fun episode that's all I'm going to say. It's just intense fun. That's the best way to describe it. Number one. I've rushed through it because I want to get to this episode. And I haven't talked about this episode on this channel. And I want to so bad because this is easily the best episode of Riverdale. The number one Riverdale episode, in my opinion, and I think a lot of other people's opinion, you know what, definitively, number one is in... Memoriam. Season 4's season premiere is without a doubt the best scripted episode, the best acted episode, the most emotional episode by a long shot, and just the best episode in general. So, this isn't really a Riverdale episode for, um, for a couple of reasons. First reason is because this is actually a tribute episode to uh, Luke Perry, who passed away um, while they were filming, or I think while season three was airing. If you don't know, Luke Perry was a pretty well-known actor. He also played Archie Andrews' dad, Fred Andrews, on Riverdale, um, and he had passed away while season three was airing. So in season four, this is pretty much a tribute to Luke Perry just through and through. Um... I think the reason why this episode is number one is because it, when you do a tribute episode, you have to make sure that you are honoring the legacy, but also not tainting the legacy, but you're also not overexposing the legacy, but you're also not, like, damaging the legacy. And I feel like Riverdale did it in a, an incredible way. And I mean, incredible. Another reason was because it has one of the best bait-and-switches I think of the entire show, because the beginning of this episode, maybe the first five minutes, feels like it's going to be a Riverdale episode. And I mean that, because you get just the overly sappy romance scenes, you get Cheryl talking to her dead brother in her basement. Yeah, that's, that's, that's something. Uh, and then once they start eating at Pops... That's when this episode switches. Archie gets a phone call. It says Fred Andrews. But no. It's the hospital. Or it might not even be the hospital. But he drops his phone. He drops to the floor. And right when that happens. This episode switches from like. Here we go. Super nonsensical Riverdale. To. Oh my god. This is. This is. So sweet. And I mean that. I mean, there's so many sweet moments that 
really honor the legacy of Luke Perry and Fred Andrews throughout entirely season four, but especially this episode. The parade scene is beautiful. We get a great scene where, well, in the show, because they have to write him off the show, uh, they say that Luke or Fred got hit by a car that was speeding out of nowhere, and he stopped because he was helping out somebody who had broke down on the side of the road. The woman who had broke down comes back to that area, and she's giving this speech to um, Archie and the gang, pretty much saying, like, he was talking about you the whole time, gives a prayer. There's a heartbreaking scene, and I mean heartbreaking, but pretty intense as well, where Archie finds out who ran over Fred, and he just rushes to their house, breaks the door open, grabbing the guy, and turns out, no, it wasn't the father, it was the son, and that's such a good, like, it's so, per it's, it's not perfect, but it's like, it fits, because Archie really did the exact same stuff when Fred was alive, he would steal his car, he would go out at night without telling him, sneak out the house, do all this horrible stuff, and now he realizes his father was there to protect him all the time. He was just there. He was supporting him the entire time. And now he's doing this stuff. And he sees kind of that same relationship. And he just kind of breaks down. Which leads to the parade scene. Which leads to the funeral. Which leads to the fireworks. Which leads to Archie. Finally. After an entire episode. Not even shedding a tear finally breaking down alone by himself where him and his dad really spent most of the time together in the garage just building it's a beautiful episode a beautiful tribute to fred andrews and luke perry and if you guys have never seen riverdale i would really recommend this episode because it doesn't really have that riverdale essence besides the first five minutes and there also is a good amount of content for people that do watch the show. I mean, Jughead's speech, Betty finally crossing her dad out of the equation, so now Betty and Archie don't really have a father figure to look up to. Veronica's dad paying for the expenses of the funeral, the hallucinations that Riverdale, for some reason, loves to do. Overall, this is easily the best episode of Riverdale. I think it's a really, really good episode. And I don't mean that in the terms of Riverdale. I mean that, like, in the real world, I thought this was, like, a well-scripted, well-acted episode. Paid tribute to the character and the actor so well. Overall, easily the best episode of Riverdale. Now, let me know. What is your favorite episode of Riverdale? Do you even watch Riverdale? Did you even watch this video entirely? <laughs> let me know if you actually did. Because I will be very surprised if you guys watch this through and through. Thank you guys for watching. I hopefully am going to get that Halloween podcast. I'm really excited to do it. Can't wait to talk about some of my absolute favorite horror movies. And hopefully I get that Victorious Top 10 out. There's def there's going to be editing in that one, so don't worry. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. And remember, the story is always right. Bye, guys.